Hi, uh, my name is Brian and I'm from Columbia University and today I'm going to be presenting the RAD, which stands for Racing Auditory Display. The RAD is an audio system that's, uh, that works with a standard pair of headphones that makes it possible for people who are blind, people such as this person who have no sight, to play video games such as racing games um, uh, with the same uh, speed and sense of control that sighted players uh, playing those racing games have. And so here we are actually giving a predominantly visual experience to a person who has no visual experience. So when I say racing games, I mean racing games such as this. The same types of racing games that sighted players would play. So racing games with 3D graphics, realistic vehicle physics, um, complex racetrack layouts, uh, and all of the above. So this is actually a racing game template that's uh, very popular on the Unity Asset Store. And so we perform our user studies using this. So the reason I feel that this problem is important is because if you look at uh, existing blind friendly video games, in particular racing games, you'll notice that they're predominantly uh, like experiences that are tailored specifically for people who are blind. They're usually very simplified versions of what sighted players would play. And so I'd like to move beyond that, uh, this is my hope with this project, and to rather than giving people who are blind a different experience um, that's not as fun as what sighted players would play, uh, give, uh, try to make existing video games, uh, ones that sighted players would be interested in, also playable by people who are blind. So I'm going to show you what an existing uh, blind friendly racing game looks like, or sounds like. So um, this is going to be Top Speed 3, which is probably the best example of a blind friendly racing game. And uh, so as I um, play a snippet from the game, remember there are no graphics because it's designed for you know, people who are blind, uh, I'd like you to think about what, um, what this game might be missing, how that experience of playing the game might be different from racing games that you might be used to already. So here we go. Right. Left. That's uh, fault. Easy right. Right. Easy left, left, hard left. Yep, that's the dish. So you might have noticed that in this game, uh, a lot of elements that are normally present in racing games are just not present. Um, so there is no, uh, for example, um, agency. The player has no agency. They simply follow orders from the game and react to uh, the, you know, the turn announcements that the game makes. So the game boils down to a simple test of reaction speed rather than really racing. Um, and then there's no real uh, simulated track. Um, it's a very simplified track. There are no vehicle physics. There are no concepts such as cutting corners. So um, now I'm going to show you like a sort of a naive solution of uh, creating a racing game that's you know, playable by, the, by people who are blind. So um, here we're going to look at driving driver assistance systems. Um, so this is previous work by both Georgia Tech on the top and Virginia Tech on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to show you that this doesn't quite work for making a video game because um, the way that these systems usually work is they use sort of a LiDAR uh, system to gain a complete, to acquire a complete model of the, of the uh, road in the 3D racetrack. And then from that model they compute and calculate the direction that the car should go and what, how the player should steer that car. And then they vibrate the, the, the driver's hands uh, to tell them, you know, turn left, 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 okay, good, right, 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 okay, good. Uh, it's a very different experience than actually racing yourself. So even in these types of systems, which um, have been published at conferences such as, you know, such as this, um, the driver is usually just following orders. So it's not really suitable for a video game. And so what we'd like to do is to create a true racing auditory display, a RAD. Uh, an audio system that makes it possible for people to um, not just follow orders but to uh, understand the road and what it's doing ahead so that they can make all of the racing decisions themselves. So this is in, co in contrast to one of these more basic auditory displays. There's an obvious acronym which you can guess. 
So what that boils down to is giving players uh, what's called intention, a game design term, um, which, uh, which you know, is synonymous with agency. Um, so with this tool that we're going to design, uh, we need to allow players to understand the current situation in the game, understand their current gameplay options, form and implement a plan of their own creation. Um, so once they understand the state of the world, they have to be able to say like, okay, I want to try to cut, thread the needle between these two consecutive turns uh, and have the freedom to be able to, uh, to implement that. And then uh, understand how that worked out. Not only that, but we need to do this while preserving the game's tempo, and this is why I focused on racing games, because uh, there's time pressure, and the player doesn't have the freedom to pause and, you know, and really survey and understand the audio cues in the environment. So not just that, but we want to use standard hardware, so just a regular game controller, a regular pair of headphones, and we don't want to overwhelm the player with too many audio cues. And so the RAD, the Racing Auditory Display, is um, comprised of two different sonification techniques. Uh, techniques of using sound to represent information. And the first is the sound slider, um, what I call the sound slider, which, is, which um, communicates to the player the, the, their relative positioning of their car on the racetrack. And then the second is the turn indicator system, which alerts players of the direction, the sharpness, the length, and the timing of upcoming turns. So I'm going to cover the sound slider in a little bit more detail, so you can just see the, you know, the kinds of design decisions that go into um, creating this tool, and then I'll briefly touch on the turn indicator system. So the way I like to describe the sound slider is like so. So imagine that you are sitting directly behind the car that you're controlling, so that you hear the sound of the car's engine right in front of your face. As you steer the car left and right, you're controlling that engine sound directly which means that that engine sound will, will slide horizontally, laterally, towards your left or towards your right, but still in front of your face. So to do this, we're using spatialized sound, um, using a standard off-the-shelf head-related transfer function. And that usually affords players like uh, maybe a 30 or 40 degree um, uh, precision of understanding where that, where that sound is emanating from. So the great thing about this setup is that if we look behind the curtain, it gives us as user interfaces uh, designers the, um, the ability to create this algorithm that takes as input uh, the current state of the world, so where the race car is, how it's positioned on the track, what the track is doing, the car's current speed, all of that stuff, take that as input, and then somehow distill that to a simple scalar value between zero and one as output. Um, and so this is a dimensionality reduction uh, sort of problem. Um, and this is where a lot of the research lies. So the question that we're going to ask is, what should X be here? So a naive way of like, uh, you know, setting X, like a good first guess, is what if we just set X to be the car's current lateral position on the racetrack? So if the car's in the middle, you put the speaker in the middle. If the car's on the left, you put the speaker towards the left. Well, it turns out that doesn't work because in a situation such as this, where a straightaway followed by a curve, that uh, sound slider would be sort of in the middle, and then as the player approaches the turn, it would swerve to the right really quickly, and the player wouldn't have enough time to react. So just to piece that apart, there's a, very, there's a big difference between being in the middle of the racetrack on a straightaway and being in the middle of the racetrack on the precipice of a very tight turn. There's a very different danger profile between those two scenarios. Likewise, if the car's on the left side of the track, there's a very different danger profile uh, between the left and right scenarios here because uh, it's, the car is much more likely to hit the right edge of the track on the figure on the right than they are on the left where, where they're pointed straight. So this is our key insight. And so uh, we decided to make the sound slider uh, convey the relative danger of hitting either edge of the track. And so uh, what we do is for every frame in the game, we compute the trajectories that the car would take if the player wanted to hit either edge of the track and steered the car into them. And then we compare their relative lengths to, to figure out this danger profile. So here it turns out the leftmost, the leftward trajectory is a little bit shorter than the right one. So we're gonna display the speaker just a little bit to the left. Likewise here, um, if we draw the trajectories, we'll see that this car on, on the right is in uh, much greater danger of hitting the right edge because this trajectory keeps going and following the turn. And same with here. The car on the right is much more in danger of hitting the right edge, and so the, um, the speaker on the sound slider, we push that to the right a little bit. 
So now the turn indicator system. So again, the RADS turn indicator system alerts players of the direction, the sharpness, the length, and timing of upcoming turns. And uh, the way that it works is that as a player approaches a turn, they'll hear a number, uh, an announcer announce the number of the turns. So they'll say like four for turn four, for example, followed by a series of four beeps. And the way that those are meant to be interpreted is um, three, two, one, turn. <coughs> so let me uh, show you how those beeps sound like for uh, turns nine and ten. Nine. So turn 10 is very quiet because there's something uh, uh, a little weird with the right stereo channel. But so the 9 and the 10, those announcements, um, actually help the player uh, memorize the turns and support memorization. And then you'll hear the beeps from the left or the right side, depending on whether or not it's a left or a right turn. Um, the pitch of the beeps indicates the sharpness of the turn. So there are three different pitches, three different sharpnesses. And the reason why there are four beeps is to establish a rhythm so that the player uh, knows when the turn is going to start. The turn starts on the fourth beep, and that last beep, that fourth beep, uh, continues sounding while the player is still in the turn. So with the, the sound slider and the turn indicator system together, allow the player to um, perform all of these actions that sighted players are used to performing in racing games. Things such as um, profiling upcoming turns, cutting corners, and even uh, pretty like expert level racing maneuvers such as choosing an early or a late apex. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you a demo of a person who's blind playing the rad. Um, so this is one of our study participants. Um, his name is Edis Adilovich. He said I could use his name. Um, he's pretty excited about the rad. And I should note that um, he's been blind his whole life. Um, and you're going to see his third ever lap uh, on our racetrack using the rad. So um, we partnered with Helen Keller Services for the Blind headquartered in Brooklyn to perform our user study. And we had both blind participants and sighted participants wearing blindfolds. Um, and we analyzed those separately. And the detailed, especially the qualitative results, are in the paper. But I'd like to show you some of the highlights from the user study, just a couple of them. First, we saw that, so here we have sighted players on top. Um, and then players either, uh, in this case, these are mostly blind players. Um, uh, driving with the RAD um, and then using one of those driver assistance systems that simply tell the player when to turn left and when to turn right. And these are the mean lap times. Um, and so we actually found that uh, players who are blind with the RAD can uh, race with like incomparable lap times to casual sighted players, players who don't race game, play racing games too often. And then not only that, but if we analyze the actual um, racing paths around our, our little complex uh, racetrack, we see, so here we're showing in blue the a racing path, a sample path from players using the RAD, and then in red, uh, a path of players using one of those driver assistance systems that tells them when to turn left or right. And we'll see that like the, the blue line actually is much smoother and looks more like what a sighted player would race. So if I... Um, make this a little bit larger, you'll see that the red one, the driver assistance system, snakes a lot, but the blue one is more steady. Uh, they try to like hug the inside of this corner, and then the, here's an S turn, they actually kind of thread the needle uh, of that S. Um, and this is someone who is blind. It was interesting to so this is, um, try uh, talking about because, um, um, the, how he the felt new experience the that it g gave to me as a visually impaired person um, in relation to playing uh, racing games, this feeling of, I guess you can say the feeling of adventure that it gave, the sense of control that it gave me as a player um, was totally different than what you would usually get from uh, other audio racing games that were specifically designed for uh, the visually impaired community. So where does that leave us, and, uh, and, what, and what have we done? Um, so a quick summary. 
so here the work was to create a true racing auditory display that gives the player the freedom to race and make the racing decisions themselves rather than simply being told what to do by an audio system designed specifically for people who are blind. Um, and so that uh, we created two different sonification techniques, some um, audio cues uh, to facilitate that. The sound slider for communicating the relative positioning of a car on a racetrack and the turn indicator system for alerting players of the direction, sharpness, length, and timing of upcoming turns. And together, uh, we found through our user studies, which are detailed in more detail in the paper, um, that uh, the RAD actually did uh, provide our, our players with a greater sense of control than one of the uh, existing driving assistance systems. And so just a quick word on some of the implications, the broader implications to HCI. Um, so the concept of the sound slider is not, uh, uh, doesn't just have to exist within racing games, but it can actually be used to sonify any sort of user interface slider or any value within a range that could be uh, located in the 3D soundscape. And uh, systems such as the RAD can also assist player, uh, people, users, in performing uh, conventional steering tasks. So if they need to move a mouse cursor through this specific pathway, you can imagine a vertical RAD that would keep them sort of within bounds. And last, um, the RAD can also help uh, users, and we, you know, we didn't test any of this, but this is all promising future work, uh, can help users in real world navigation. So for example, walking along uh, pathways uh, rather than simply having beacons or waypoints that tell the user what, where to go and that's all they know about the environment, uh, if they were using a system such as the RAD, they could uh, be able to understand how wide the path is and maybe, you know, so that they kind of keep towards the right side of the path and don't collide with other people. So with that, uh, thank you very much for listening um, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Brian. So the stage is open for one quick question and then we have to take it in the front of the stage. Hi, uh, Drea Britt from Ohm University. So how easy or difficult do you think it is to bring the RAD to conventional racing games to, to make them accessible? Yeah, the, um, the, the, only, the main challenge in doing that um, is uh, creating a way that uh, for, access for existing racing games to provide a model of their track layouts to the RAD. Because the RAD needs to know where the track is going and how wide it is at every point. Um, and once the developer like, can express their track in that form, um, then it's a, it's a pretty simple plug and play. So basically you could do this even after release with just the, the additional information? Correct. Oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the whole point was to make this work with existing racing games. Um, ideally, yeah. Uh, Kazutaka Kurihara from Tsunai University. Nice talk. Yes. And uh, uh, my question is, I think you built your own racing game for this <coughs> study. Yes. Does it have a background music or sound effect? Because that might affect on the world your RAD approach. Yes, so this game did count, come with some background music and a whole bunch of sound effects. We turned the background music off um, for our study, but we kept all the other sound effects in, like all the tires screeching, and like if you bump into a wall, you hear that. Um, there's the engine sound, but then there are a lot of other sounds that your car makes, such as the transmission and the suspension. Those are all in, and they didn't affect players. Yeah. Right. Thank you all for your wonderful questions, and let's thank the speakers again.